trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another case study for you and on the call I have Henry. So Henry, do you want to just start by introducing yourself and letting everyone know what health issues you've been experiencing over the last couple of years? Yeah, um, so I'm 20 at the moment um, and for the past, I'd say two years, um, I've experienced like significant bloating, um, food intolerances, um, like periods of um, like acid reflux where I'd go without it for a period but then it get really bad severe where it had to stop working um and it just got really severe to the point where i had to stop start stripping back food um and only really survive on a couple of foods okay so in, in that period of time um sort of other digestive issues any sort of gas and bloating cramping those type of problems yeah like a lot of cramping every time i eat um so when i eat uh breakfast i get really severe like gas in my stomach um, which would just like create a lot of stomach problems that would really hurt. And then with like lunch and dinner, I get like cramping, um, just a lot, a lot of pain in my abdomen, stuff like that. Okay. Um, and you said these issues had been going on for the last two years or so. Mm, um, yeah. Was there a trigger around that point, point of time that you can think back to that may have triggered some of these issues, any kind of antibiotic use, other medications, change in diets or anything like that? Um, so I think, yeah, it might have been due to, I can't think of it an exact thing, but I think it probably was due to antibiotics because I can't remember these problems existing really before that. Um, and I think it was just like a two week course for some sort of, like, I think I had, it was just kind of one of those things where I think we thought it might be something. So the doctor just prescribed antibiotics. Um, and then kind of ever since then, things just got progressively worse. Okay, so before that, no real significant acid reflux or digestive. No, or not really. Like no. Okay, um, and when you started to develop these issues um, and they were at their worst, um, what was the um, the impact on your quality of life? So how severe um, were these symptoms? So, as I always say to people in these type of calls, um, if you can score the symptoms out of ten, ten being the worst, one being okay, um, where do you sit? Or where did you sit on that scale? I think at its worst point, it was probably a nine or a 10. It got really severe where it kind of severely impacted my mental health. Um, just my quality of life, especially just not going out and not doing things, kind of recluding, um, not seeing people, affecting my work to the point where I almost quit my job many times, um, like taking sick days and stuff, which obviously I didn't want to do. Um, just, yeah, really severely impacted my quality of life. Okay. And um, what was your diet um, pre and post uh, that type of issue? So di did you change your diet significantly um, after the antibiotics when some of these issues started to arise? So it's quite a weird time because I think I think it was, must have been like a month before the antibiotics. Um, I was exploring a vegan diet and my, my body was getting used to the vegan diet anyway because um, obviously going from really low fibre to having quite a lot of fibre obviously I think it takes uh, like a couple of weeks to get used to. And I remember being really happy and starting to get used to it. And then obviously after this antibiotic um, use, um, it kind of started to slowly go downhill. It wasn't really noticeable at first. And then I just remember it getting really severe um, and kind of the more fiber I ate, the worse it got, um, which meant that I started stripping back foods. Like I stopped having like any legumes um so wouldn't have any lentils or anything like that that kind of stripped out grains um and just kind of survived on like easy to digest fruit and vegetables um okay. for a good part of a year um so w when you were modifying your diet um in that fashion did it did it help control your symptoms did it help reduce the severity of the problem um it did at first so when i first cut out um, like beans and stuff like that obviously that because they're quite high fiber foods I think it definitely helped to begin with um, and then the foods which weren't a problem before started to become a problem so I had to scale back and then it got to a point literally for the before I reached out to you it was got to a point where everything like there was no avoiding the symptoms everything caused symptoms okay um, and what was your your doctor's take on all of these different issues that you were experiencing they kind of they put it down a lot obviously IBS that's like the first go-to IBS it's all um but I got a lot 
in in my head because obviously my mental effect my mental health was affected by this um my gp seemed to think that the kind of it was all in my head in a, in a way um so i had to get i like i tried to seek out specialist help which they did do the tests and like they found SIBO and I think I this might have been well I think I was watching your videos at the time so I didn't know about SIBO um, but I got the test done externally with a doctor um, and even he who was apparently a specialist said that um, you know SIBO always relapses there's no you can you can treat it but it will always come back is what his um, take on was it. Okay I mean that, that in itself is quite interesting because a lot of people that I see um, when they get to me, um, their doctors have just pushed back and said it's IBS. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, a lot of doctors, and this isn't a bash on doctors at all, but a lot of doctors are not overly familiar with SIPO. So mm. it's fairly interesting from your perspective that you've gone to see a doctor. Um, they've done a test on you. Um, it was detected that you had SIPO, um, but obviously their opinion was then, well, you know, once you've got it, and there's nothing you can do about it. Will probably relapse, and you know, you probably have to modify sort of your diet indefinitely. So that that's quite an interesting perspective in itself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you you figured out you've you've got this problem, um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, so, what did you do um, once you sort of figured that out with your doctor uh, in terms of diet, further dietary modifications, supplements, or anything like that? Um. So I think what they, the first doctor I went to wanted to describe me just like one uh, broad range antibiotic, um, which I kind of researched myself and wasn't sure if it was the right decision. They didn't really give me much uh, help or advice in terms of like dietary intervention, which I guess you can't really treat it with diet. Um, so I was kind of a bit of a loss. Um, and then that's when I obviously reached out to you um, and got your opinion on it. Okay, so um, just just to make people aware and um, people who are watching, um, so you did the the SIBO test um, through your doctor, um, and then you did the organic acids and comprehensive stool test via me. Um, essentially, the main problems within those tests, and I'll, I'll put it up on screen so people can see if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, the main issues were methane dominant SIBO, you had some pancreatic enzyme um, issues and a few other bits and pieces, but the predominant issue for you um, was that high level of methane um, sort of producing bacteria within the small intestines. Yeah. Um, so um, we obviously, we looked at all of that information um, and I, I put you on a plan of various different, you know, dietary modifications, supplements, and a, a few different antimicrobials. And we'll go through that in a, in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, but your your sort of road has been a, a little bit more rocky than, um, you know, normal people with SIBO infections that I see. So generally speaking, and this is a, a broad generalization, a lot of people that I see for SIBO infections, they can generally deal with it in a period of maybe anywhere from eight weeks to, you know, maybe, maybe 12, 14 weeks kind of uh, worst case scenario for a lot of people. In your situation, it's kind of gone on for what, over 12 months now? Yeah, around a year now. Um, so do you want to just talk people through um, that process? Because obviously for some people in your situation, it's not always plain sailing to get rid of these type of problems. So do you want to just talk people through sort of the, the dietary modifications and supplements that I put you on um, initially in terms of what level of improvement you saw and didn't see during that initial period of time? Yeah, so um, I think we started with two in combination to begin with, uh, which worked well for methane um and it wasn't like a, a particularly high dosage because we wanted to see how things would go um and i definitely noticed improvement straight off the bat like it wasn't something that took a while to come about um straight away i started to notice improvements um and it was just quite weird because i think it was up and down so i'd notice a lot of improvements and then suddenly it would all go back down to how it was um and i'd kind of be feel like I was back to the start and then a couple of days afterwards it'd be really good again um which was quite weird I thought rather than obviously progressing and getting better it was kind of up and down um and then it kind of got to a point where I thought it had gone because uh, I hadn't had any symptoms for ages um and I think that was the time when I we retested again and my numbers were I think they were slightly lower or they were pretty much the same. Um, and by that time I'd been off of all supplements 
for like five weeks um and either it is i just not got rid of it which means that it'd come back well it just grown back to where it was which i think yeah. is probably what happened um or I didn't eat right afterwards or didn't do something right. So it came back. But I think probably what makes sense is that I just didn't completely eradicate it. Um, Cause obviously the second time we then treated it, we went in with the same stuff, but at much higher, well, not a much higher, but slightly higher um, dosage. And then obviously I retested after that thinking it had pro- gone because most of my symptoms were gone. Um, and then I think it was like a it was a huge reduction in what the the actual levels were. I think it was like eighty percent gone. Um, and then the third time we went in with like a different set of antimicrobials, which I mean have seemed to have done the trick. And that was much shorter because I guess it was wide spectrum. It's much shorter period of time doing that. Yeah, and, and I think it's quite um, sort of relevant to, to say that um, you know for for. A relatively high proportion of people, um, if you take things like berberine, grapefruit seed extracts, um, Ali Med, oregano, those type of um, antimicrobials, um, then for relatively high proportion of people, they are effective at removing the issue. So, you know, people can take them for maybe six, eight, 10, 12 weeks or so, and, and then it will strip out the bacteria and those symptoms of IBS and gas and bloating will um, significantly reduce for, for a high proportion of people. There are a smaller subset of people out there, particularly, um, and I see this a lot with, um, you know, relatively high amounts of methane problems, where they they can try taking those single compound antimicrobials such as berberine, um, and and they're not sufficient to um, resolve the issue. Um, So they have to go on to a more broad spectrum antimicrobial, like you've just alluded to there, such as metagenics or biotics or those type of supplements, which is a lot more broad spectrum, a little bit more heavy duty. Um, and generally people who go on to those, um, they will um, they will be very effective very quickly. The, the, the slight drawback with those type of antimicrobials, uh, and there's, there's a decent amount of science to support their use, um, the problem or the the significant problem with those type of antimicrobials is that um, they can cause a fair amount of sort of nausea, increased gas and bloating, cramping um, and similar symptoms in some people. Did did you notice any of those type of symptoms while taking sort of the the more broad spectrum antimicrobials? Um, I I can't exactly remember um, because obviously my symptoms were similar to that that anyway so I kind of wasn't sure where the symptoms end and where maybe the symptoms from that began Um, but definitely I mean I think I was on that broad spectrum for eight weeks in total by the six week mark I didn't have any for the last like two weeks I didn't have any digestive symptoms whatsoever. Okay um and in terms of the the plans overall i know it's been kind of a uh, a long and protracted, protracted drawn out process for you mm. compared to many people with seabird infections um but the various different plans that you were put on i mean how how did you find them generally in terms of dietary modifications and um sort of the, the ease of use if we call it that? i actually didn't mind them at all to be honest i thought it was i mean first of all i was incorporating more food straight off the bat anyway because these antimicrobials were obviously helping to reduce the bacteria. So really quickly, I noticed that I was able to start introducing more food, which was obviously an exciting prospect after eating a year of just like really plain, boring foods. I could start incorporating stuff, which I hadn't had in a while. Um, Obviously there's stuff like taking like the digestive support, taking that prior to the meal is something I had to think about. And if I was ever going out, I'd plan, um, plan before like 10 minutes before I take it make sure to take it um but I didn't really notice like it wasn't I guess because I was so um my quality of life was so bad from not having this treatment that I was just willing to do anything um and it was I didn't mind it at all okay um, and if we if we fast forward slightly then to um, today, uh, we put you on the broad spectrum antimicrobials. Um, as you said there, things speeded up um, quite quickly for you. Um, mm. You got a, a fairly sizable reduction in symptoms. Um, so do you just want to explain to everyone where your symptoms are at at the moment in terms of today? Yeah, like absolutely. It's weird because like stuff which I didn't think would be... Um improved has improved so I think I remember fatigue was something I used to get 
maybe like an hour after eating I just get like a period of fatigue and it was really strange to me and I didn't think it was really due to SIBO I think maybe like, oh you know some people just get tired after eating but since coming off of everything now and you know like trying to rebuild my good gut bacteria it's just completely gone it's bizarre um digestive symptoms no worries with that at all getting no cramping or anything like that um yeah it's just been really great just normality again i think okay um and in terms of uh, improvements you've seen in your quality of life what what has all of this kind of meant for you on a daily basis it's just it's i can't really describe it it's just exciting really exciting my prospects now like i'm looking forward to seeing where i'm going next and new jobs which i'm i mean obviously it's not a great job market at the moment but um looking forward to to seeing where i go from here and not having to worry about stuff which just holds you back like oh i could do that but obviously i've got to worry about uh, that job if i need to take time off things like that i don't have to worry about that anymore okay um over the last sort of two or three years on social media and the internet there's been sort of a, an apocalypse of ex-vegans and all of those just you know different types of people who experience a lot of similar issues that you experience in terms of gas and bloating digestive issues skin issues joint problems um all of these different problems um a lot of those people ha have been fairly adamant that it's you know plant-based foods which are causing these problems so um if someone had very similar sort of health issues um, to what you had previously, um, what advice would you give them um, before they jump into sort of keto diets or carnival diets or any kind of diets which are purported to be kind of a, um, a miracle cure? I just, honestly, it just comes down to actually getting tested. Like if you can do the test, which isn't go to the doctors to try like you know if you know the test names you can get them done through for example the nhs in the uk um they do do cover some tests um just kind of before doing all these like fad diets especially the keto and carnivore um it just really frustrates me i guess because i think it's it's more from the point of view of your own health it just doesn't make sense because you're kind of putting off the inevitable. You're not actually getting healthy. You're just trying something which isn't going to work. Um, so you're just setting yourself up for failure, really. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think that's spot on. I mean, a, a lot of people that I, I see who have tried water fasting, juice mm. cleansing, keto diets, carnivore diets, there will inevitably in those situations for a lot of people be a reduction in symptoms because if you have something like a SIBO infection, which for those people listening who, who are not overly familiar with it, it just means that you've got an abnormal accumulation of bacteria in the small intestines where it shouldn't be. So anytime you load up on sort of fiber or co carbohydrates, uh, that produces a lot of gas and then that um, produces a lot of symptoms such as gas and bloating. So in that situation, it stands to reason that if you remove those foods from your diet, um, that gas and bloating is going to reduce. But that's a very, very s sort of short-sighted um, view of things because if you start stripping out um, sort of the bacteria in the colon and the small intestines as well, um, by using sort of dietary modifications such as keto or carnivore, yes, you're, you're going to reduce your symptoms, but you're going to reduce um, sort of the diversity in the colon, which you need for the breakdown and fermentation of fiber, the production of short chain fatty acids. Um, it helps with your gut immune um, sort of function. So lots and lots of really, really important areas that people are not really taking into account at the moment. They're going, I've got these symptoms. I'm going to modify my diet to control these symptoms. And they're not really thinking past that. And I think as we see on the internet today with the likes of um, Vegetable Police, you've got Michaela and Jordan Peterson, you've got all of these different people. Um, when you deep dive into their health issues, they've not gone at all. Th those issues are still there. You've got people like Michaela Peterson. Yes, admittedly, at the moment, she's starting to increase some fruits and vegetables in her diet. Um, but it's taken her two years to get to a stage at the moment where she can only eat a couple of different fruits and vegetables. Whereas if she'd have taken maybe a slightly different tack um, and followed somebody like you, where they've tried to tackle some of the problems head on without kind of trying to swerve around them, um, then it may have been a little bit easier on her. But that, that, that's just my, my perspective on things anyway. Yeah. Um, so um, just, to, just to summarize then, um, any, any other kind of thoughts or comments generally about SIBO or sort of plant-based diets or anything like that in general? Um... I mean, I had a lot of people obviously 
when I was going through digestive issues would just kind of doubt the vegan diet or doubt the vegan you know they put it down to oh you've got digestive issues because you're vegan uh, you need to start eating meat or you need to start eating dairy and you'll be better like people who had no scientific research or just like friends and family things like that um I just think honestly just do do what you can to do the tests I think I know it is a lot of money and that was something for me if I, in the beginning I was justifying if I would spend the money on the tests um but honestly I can say it's the best thing I've ever done because I wouldn't be in this position now I'd probably be I don't, I don't want to think about where I'd be in terms of what I'd be eating or how I'd be living um and where my health would be at if I hadn't have done these tests and actually tried to like you said tackle the problem head on yeah no absolutely and and I, and I think what I want to say to you and just repeat this as well because um a lot of people recently on the internet have been putting out material about me and that I'm, I'm, you know, some purported vigilante who's just kind of running around testing people with bogus testing and things like that. So I, I just want to reiterate um, the main course of action for people should always be to go and see your doctor in the first instance. Yeah. Um, like you did get checked out. You want to make sure there's nothing underlying, nothing serious that, that could be potentially causing some of these issues. You know, for, for, for some people, it could be a simple dietary modification to get on top of these issues for somebody like you um, with you know fairly significant methane dominant SIBO infections then you know th there are different options you can use antibiotics if you want to go down that route um, or there are natural antimicrobials which are just as effective so yeah I, I would absolutely say um, I would agree with everything you've said there but if anybody is listening to this your, your first port of call should always be with your doctor um, and, and yes, there are good and bad doctors out there, and this is not a bash on sort of medicine at all. They've got a difficult enough job as it is. Um, but if you are, if you if you are not getting the support of a doctor, and they're just pushing back on you and saying it's IBS, there's nothing we can do, then reach out to. There's lots of different dietitians, nutritionists, functional doctors out there, or maybe see another doctor, uh, change doctors, and just speak to somebody else and get a second opinion on it. Because unfortunately for a lot of people that I see with IBS related symptoms um, you know they've been pushed pushed back from their doctor for maybe 10 or 15 years um, and it's you know it's been impacting on their quality of life more and more uh, and if they'd have done sort of simple diagnostic testing in the first place and identified you know pancreatic enzyme insufficiency or SIBO infections or these type of issues then they could have saved themselves sort of eight to ten years of um, poor quality of life so yeah I, I would absolutely um, sort of agree with everything you've said there um, any, anything else um, that you no, would maybe recommend um, just uh, I mean I can't yeah I can't think of anything off the top of my head but I just want to thank you obviously in terms of I think a lot of I mean I do think some vegans do think uh it's because SIBO I guess is quite relatively new they won't necessarily acknowledge it and it'll kind of be oh it's just adjusting to the vegan diet um but I think like you said in one of your videos a lot of people have health problems prior to coming on a vegan lifestyle um which kind of just get enhanced by the vegan diet which they then blame on the vegan diet um so I think yeah just doing the tests making sure that finding the root cause i guess before blaming um you know the lifestyle or anything like that yeah no absolutely amen well look, um I, I just want to thank you so much for um so, sort of your time today i'm sure everybody listening um will have uh, appreciated that particularly people who are going through sort of SIBO infections or gas and bloating type of issues at the moment or other digestive issues so yeah thanks so much for your time uh, it's been a pleasure working with you um over the, the last few months in, in particular just to see these improvements and um you getting sort of your health back on track so yeah thanks so much for your time and thank I you too to thanks in contact with you in the future amazing thank you so much much.